hands like. Still turn forward. So mm -hmm. I gotta turn to over toward each other. It'll be able to see. No, I'm talking about from when. I'm not going to have a sign. Is that new or is that old? Oh, that's old. Right, we used to have a vacation. But I'm, I'm not in that building, I'm in. A okay. building, another. Do you remember when you drive on the parking lot of bees to go to yeah. the left? My building is immediately to the right. I never even paid attention to that building until I started working there. Happy Saturday, everyone, and you know what that means. We are here for our final episode of Shop Talk for the year 2023, and I'm super excited about this show today because in continuation of our men's feature from last month, if you all recall, we discussed when men hurt. So today... Hold on, hold on, hold on. my stuff in. I should have brought the other one. This the one that gave me problems. What, with the sound? Yeah. You abuse this thing so much. It might have just been when I kicked it over. Oh. And it might have just shook the card or something inside, so it should be fine. Make sure. Can Sting if you're still here? Well, I won't be able to hear you until I come on. technical difficulty but you know the show always go on so let's take it from the top shall we <laughs> good evening welcome to another Saturday and that means it is shop talk time did you hear something oh, uh, okay I'm a little off because I'm in a holiday season but no worries this is our final show for year 2023 if you remember, last month we discussed when men hurt. So in continuation and closing out the year 23, we just want to keep the focus on men and empower them, educate them with hopes that they will then focus on themselves and just sow a little bit into their wellness. So we are sitting here with an amazing guest, Mr. Jovan Crocker. And let me just tell you, his background it was too much, so I'm just going to give you some quick snippets of him. He acquired his nursing degree from none other than Coppin State Helena Nursing Program. He later went on to Morgan State.
to earn his certified nursing practitioner? Well, I went to, I got my master's from Morgan. Okay. And I got my MP from Bowie. Okay. Correction. I'm okay with that. Um, but as I was just researching you and reading all the different things you do, you're beyond more than well equipped to have this conversation for our men. Just your leadership, your ability to be informative. You currently Keep going. Just pause for a second. Okay. You currently work at the Veterans Department um, no, facility. Pause it, pause it, pause it. I'm sorry. I don't see what's going on with this thing. Y'all, we are really having some holiday technical difficulties, but it's going to work out, and it's going to be a good show. So this is a perfect time to ask you, you still, you still dancing? Yeah, 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 down <laughs> in the valley. Down in the valley, yes. Listen, y'all know we are totally unscripted. You get all of the bloopers. You get all of the silliness. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, what for real? What did I say? Bloopers. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. What was it? Listen. Behind the um camera, y'all know that's not go. other than Christopher from Relic Media. Like just giving me an absolute difficult time today, but Never. Not, I never give you a difficult time. He doesn't. He, you know, it's, it's all love and respect. I just want to make sure that we're all good with everything okay. before we go. He, for those who can't see, he's digging in his bag looking for something. I don't really know what it is, so. Let's just, another card. Okay. Let's just get into some more of this dancing business without. Without. He doesn't really dance, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> No. But listen. No. I don't. No. <laughs> not there's not that there's anything wrong with that. Right. That's what not you that do. there's anything wrong. You get your yeah. you get your coin how you get your coin. With, yeah, with the cost of living, uh. a gallon of milk is at some stores it is seven dollars or almost seven dollars. Yep. The gentleman's club might get my application. Yeah. I'm Love. I'm gonna need a chair though for my set because the knees. Well, yeah, Tommy Cole. The, knee, the, the knees. The knees. The knees. It's always been the knees. And it's so funny I said the need, so hopefully you can speak to that <laughs> with the show. With the show. <laughs> Even though it's for the men, I'll take away some of the tips. But yeah, speak to the, you know, the needs. They don't really, they're but not see, given the style yet. They, they're, they're, yeah, but, but see, <laughs> that's because, see, you're, you're, you're outside of the salient era. See, you came up with the drop down, get your eagle on. And that's what that's what messed my dropping. knees up. See that and that's, that's why. And Luke, you and right. Luke, that's yeah, what that's messed why. so listen, us Gen X people, for mm -hmm. all y'all millennials that don't have respect for us, that's with this Megan the Stallion. Our knees understand. Are are bad. Understand that what y'all doing ain't nothing compared to what we was doing. But y'all had to but y'all 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 crawl so they can walk. Okay? But that part. That part. So So Respect that, so that so res that's why you got bad knees. That's why you got bad knees. You know you. We almost ready. Okay. You know, Christopher you, said we're almost ready. Yeah, if you definitely listen to Luke, you know any of them back back in the day, you he know tag team Tussie Roll. He was just doing the Grammy Grammys. 50 celebrating 50 years of hip hop. I missed it, but I heard it was the it was a good tribute. Yeah, JJ Fad was on it with Supersonic for all y'all who don't know. So yeah, Google right. it. We live. We we been live. All right, well let's go. Okay. Start the intro again. <laughs> Happy Saturday. We are back for the third time, and it is shop talk time. In continuation and closing out the year 2023, we are closing out with more information and knowledge for our men. Last month we discussed when men heard, we dubbed into just the journey of healing and how not healing held them back. And oddly enough, within that conversation came about some of the health risks beyond just the mental health piece associated. With once you do start that healing process, a lot of things are unveiled to you. So let me just go back with our special guest. Mm, not guest, but guest, <laughs> Mr. Jovan Crocker. Mr. Jovan Crocker is a board certified nurse practitioner. He currently works at the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, Department of Veterans Affairs. Affairs. <laughs> this is such a geeky show right now. Anyway, um, 
His areas of expertise are medical, surgical, telemetry, as well as nursing education, case management, leadership, and family practice. So within those six specialty areas, you cover an array of issues with, I'm going to just assume you see both male and female. Correct. Okay, but today we want to solely focus on men in the sense of, one, and educating them on the importance of taking their health serious. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, preventative care. And the last thing we're hoping to dove into if we have time is maintenance care. So if you could just tell the audience, our viewers, more about yourself. Um, as stated, I'm a um, board certified family nurse practitioner. Um, I currently work um, at the Department of Veterans Affairs, um, as well as some other um, side jobs because, as you stated, you know, cost of living is no joke, so you got to have multiple, multiple streams of income. Um, and I do some general practicing with um, a local clinic, uh, Taylor Integrated Health, um, at Government Medical Center. Um, and all of my training leading up to becoming a nurse practitioner has kind of shaped how I interact or will be interacting with patients. Um, to male, male and female because I can um, treat patients across the lifespan from birth to death. Um, I would like to more, more focus on men's health, but it's not, there's not a dedicated area for that. Like when, women, you have women's health where you have GYN right. and right. OB and all of that stuff, where men, we don't have something specifically that's men's health, you know, unless it's something more so specific urological issues where you're dealing with the genitals and things like that. But um, like you said, one of the biggest um, things now in healthcare is prevent preventative management, preventative measures, because you always, whenever you think about stuff, you have to always go back to money. Mm -hmm. It's easier to prevent something from happening right. than treating it on the back end, which is where we as black men get caught in that vicious cycle because by the time we finally go mm -hmm. to the doctor or to the hospital, it's something that has snowballed and now we are in an acute crisis, meaning something is actively happening, which is what made us go. Because right. we're, unless it's, if it's something that we can push through, we're going to push through it. Because mm -hmm. as society of black men, we are told to be strong, push through, you know, mm -hmm. push, you know, push through the pain. And we push. just talked about that on the last podcast. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, and I'm, I'm glad that I you know, piggyback on that because a lot of stuff dealing with mental health can affect your physical health because if you're dealing with some mental health, if you're dealing with severe depression, you're not going to eat. You're not going to get up. You're not going to be active. You're not going to want to do anything. So you're going to ignore a lot of things that may come along and because you're depressed or if you are bipolar or schizophrenic, you're you have too many other things literally going on in your head mm -hmm. that you're not going to address the fact that you may be having chest pain or that you may have a wound that you haven't addressed. Right. So I, I just want to pause right there for that thought. When we did last month show When Men Hurt, um, one of the statistics that I gave was that men are at a 41% rate higher of mortality as opposed to the female counterpart and my research didn't just stop there, knowing that you were coming on the show today. Mm -hmm. I did more research and it showed that the suicide rate is higher for men that are under the age of 35 and also higher for men that are under the age of 50. So pretty much you might as well say 50 on down if you're yep. doing those age range. So with that being said, what... What are some of the key basic exams that our men should be getting annually? So on an annual basis, you should at bare minimum be getting a physical. Mm -hmm. A physical by a um, primary care provider, whether it is a physician, physician's assistant, or nurse practitioner. Um, most of the times you'll encounter either a nurse practitioner or a physician. Mm -hmm. um, here in Maryland, nurse practitioners, we have full practice authority, so we don't need the oversight of a physician. 
where some states they do and a physician's assistant in the title it tells you they're an assistant so they can they can examine you but they're still going to need the physician to come back and co-sign um so you should bare minimum be get going to a primary care provider yearly and in that physical you should your primary care provider should you should be getting undressed I tell my patients and family members and friends, if you're going to the doctor for your annual physical and you're not taking off your clothes, at least to your underclothes, find yourself another provider. Mm -hmm. So wait so wait a minute. Just for our viewers, could you explain what you mean by getting undressed? I don't want people just showing up at their PC so getting when naked. You, when you go to the doctor and you're going for a physical, they'll they'll get your vitals and height and weight. All of that stuff will be done typically by the um medical assistant or mm -hmm. the nurse in the office and mm -hmm. then you'll be shown into the exam room once you're in the exam room the doctor will come in or the provider will come in and do a brief introduction well what brings you in today oh you're coming in for a physical okay well i'm going to need you to get undressed to your underclothes they'll step out allow you to get undressed and then come back in and, and conduct the exam and during that examination, listen to your heart, your lungs, your bowels, your bow your stomach, your bowel sounds. Um, look at how you're standing, how you're walking, and that that actually it can be started when you come into the office. If the they they notice any abnormality, if you're limping, you you have a foot drop, meaning you're dragging your foot for whatever reason, um, or if you complain about something with your feet, legs, limbs, they can address that. Um, Getting undressed allows the provider to look at the skin to see if there's any abnormalities of the skin because even as black people, we still can manifest with skin cancer. Yeah. It's not as common with black people, but we still can manifest with it. So if they're not looking at your skin, they don't know what's going on. You know, we love our tattoos. We as black people are prone to keloids. Mm. So those, type of, to, those types of things um, at a minimum should be done. Um, during that annual exam, blood work should be taken, your lab should be taken. Mm -hmm. So at bare minimum, they should be getting just some baseline labs just to see where everything is. A um, What we call a CBC or a complete blood count with differential. Okay. That actually looks at the amount of blood you have in your system, your red blood cells, white blood cells, and then it breaks each one of those down further into the different categories of each blood cell. So that's how we can tell if you're anemic and what type of anemia you have, iron deficient versus something else. Um, white blood cells, we can look and break that down because if that's elevated, we can tell you have some type of infection. So then when we look further into it, okay, well, you have the, an increase of these specific type of white blood cells, let's say neutrophils, which is an acute infection, something that's actively going on versus a different type of white blood cell, meaning that an infection could have been ongoing. Um, what else? Cholesterol. You want to look at your cholesterol. You want to look at your triglycerides. Um, what is, for, just for the viewers, what is triglycerides? So those are fats. So, you know, when you tell people about eating um, fatty diets, those types of things, because everything comes out in the blood. So that's why just think when you go to the hospital or you go to the ER, the first thing they're going to do is draw blood because yeah. yeah. everything comes out in the blood. It tells us a lot of information. Um, for men, especially if you are 50 and over, you should be getting a um, PSA, a prostate spe um, prostatic specific antigen. That will let us know if you're having some type of issues with your prostate. Usually that number should be less than four point four. Okay. Um, and that just kind of let us know we may need to do a little bit more investigation because let's just say if that um, patient came in, they're sixty years old, they're complaining of um, increased urination at night, they are have a weak urine stream, or they are having some dribbling that they're noticing. All of those signs are pointing to the prostate may be enlarged. That does not mean cancer, but it means okay. that the prostate is enlarged because if you think about it, the prostate sits at the bottom of the, the bladder and the urethra goes through the prostate. So 
if that prostate is enlarged, it's going to begin to pinch off the urethra and it's not going to allow urine to flow out um, as adequately as it should. Um, so that would just let us know, okay, they, they fit the criteria for um, what we call benign prostatic hypertrophy, meaning the prostate is just getting larger. So mm -hmm. now we need to go further and say, do we need to get a biopsy? Do we need to do other tests to so confirm? Before you even can get them to that part, professionally from your experience, what is the likelihood that a man is even going to actively engage in that type of care to get his prostate examined if it's not a female doctor or if at all? Um, for that particularly, it's very, it's a very low risk. Typically, we don't we, we don't see patients come in until they are manifesting with symptoms because of the location of the prostate and if the prostate is in fact enlarged or their um, PSA test comes back abnormal or elevated, mm -hmm. the next step is to do a digital rectal exam which most men, especially black men, are not necessarily prone to getting done. Most definitely. <laughs> exactly. Because basically, basically, it's somebody has to stick their finger in your butt. And see, just pausing right there. So, Christopher, your response is why we chose to do this particular show because have you had that test done? Let me no, it's question. coming up. My colonoscopy is coming up because I just hit 45 uh, last okay. week. So my colonoscopy right. is coming up. You know what I mean? So, but I'm not saying that I'm not looking forward to it because I want to know that I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I, and, I, and I know a lot of people that went through prostate cancers and things of that nature. So I'm, I'm not saying I'm looking forward to somebody sticking your finger. <laughs> but, 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 but as you, far as the health wise, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't have an issue with it. But for you, it wouldn't be really necessary because they would just draw the PSA. Okay. If it was normal, it's no need. Okay. But if oh. you if it's abnormal, okay, and you're beginning, you have some symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now we because that's the way that we can feel the prostate to see exactly what it's. See, now that's, it can be palpated through the rectum. Now that's the best thing about these type of talks because a lot of men don't know that you know, and well, I, I, I never knew right. that you know, I never knew that, and I didn't all. know yeah, that either. You know, so. so. Yeah. So if you could just repeat that again for our viewers, and I'm definitely going to make sure I put that in the replay okay. notes for them, because I think that with, that allows some of that fear and mm -hmm. hesitance, you know, to kind of be removed. And I know some years ago, we lost great artists, entertainers, and even, mm -hmm. not even celebrities, people lost family members, mm -hmm. you know, because they did not go, and when they finally went, as you were speaking to earlier, it had spiraled out of control, mm -hmm. and it was pretty much irre not reversible reverse, yeah. at all. So if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, people don't like to have these difficult and hard and frightening conversations, but my motto is, when we know better, the hope and expectation is that we, we will do, do better, better mm -hmm. for ourselves. So let shop talk, you know, be that platform where we're having them uncomfortable conversations, but educating you and providing you information and resources. So if you could just talk about those fatal outcomes when they don't get those exams, that particular one done. Correct. Um, and and just like I said, it, it doesn't mean that you have X, Y, Z. It just means that this is something that's going on. And further investigation needs to be done because there have been cases where people have had no symptoms, mm -hmm. a normal PSA, and then turned around and popped up with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. okay. And then there have been cases where people have had symptoms, have had an elevated PSA, and then when they did the digital rectal or they did a biopsy, it was negative. Mm -hmm. So what but would give a false, a false it could, like that? It could be a number of things. Um, I know um, a lot of exercise can possibly give a, can skew your um, lab results um, for PSA, motor, um, bike riding or motorcycle riding because of where the prostate sits mm. um, can give you a false reading. So that's why you have to get these other confirmatory tests to see because if, the, if you're having symptoms, your PSA is elevated and um, there's abnormality in the digital rectal, the next step would be a biopsy to confirm 
because it just may be abnormal growth, and which is it, it can be a, an inconvenience, but it's nothing wrong with it. But you don't want to be sitting around and cancer be growing and not know. Prostate cancer is one of the most treatable cancers mm. because oftentimes it's caught early enough to be treated. Okay. And um, just like you were saying, going back to your colonoscopy, and that's why they're coming at 45 because after the death of Ch Chadwick Bozeman, right, he did not fit the criteria because he wasn't old enough. Mm. Typically, it starts. You go for your colonoscopy at 50. Okay. And then, if there's any abnormalities, if there's polyps present, and they take the polyps, they may have you come back within three to five years if there were polyps or whatever. But because he was younger, he was outside of that demographic, right. the research went back and they adjusted it and right. said, come at 45 years old. And then even earlier, if you have um, right. relatives, especially first degree relatives, your, your dad, mm -hmm. your uncle, your brother, if they've had um, colon cancer or prostate cancer issues, because prostate cancer is really, it's a really screen for until about 50 anyway. But... Some providers have gotten into the habit now of just getting that PSA test so that it can be a baseline because all of those tests that I just mentioned mm -hmm. is establishing a baseline because if everything is normal, there's no need for you to come back until the following year. Mm -hmm. And it's just a repeat of those same types of tests just to make sure nothing has changed from, that, from the previous year. Now, if you have an ongoing conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, anything where you're taking medications regularly, mm -hmm. then you should be seen more frequently. Typically every three months because okay. usually um, most providers, at least my provider, she will schedule my medication, she'll give me a 90 day refill with uh, a 90 day supply with no refills because that will prompt me to reach back out to her for a refill and then she'll schedule me for a visit. That's how she keeps her patients managed. So that's what we call chronic disease management because you have a chronic disease you constantly take medicine for and you need to be monitored for because you want to make sure number one, the treatment is working. Mm -hmm. Number two, you're not beginning to have um, complications or other effects from that disease process. Right. Um, such as hypertension can cause issues with the kidneys. Mm. Most people who have prolonged hypertension usually end up needing dialysis or um, diabetes because diabetes pretty much just slows blood flow everywhere. So people who have um, prolonged diabetes, especially if it's untreated, typically have kidney issues because of the very small vessels in the kidneys. So the kidneys begin to decline in function. But going to your doctor, following up with your specialist, because then if you are diagnosed, if you go to your doctor annually and then you are diagnosed with hypertension, let's just say hypertension, then you'll, and they put you on medications, you should be seen every three months. And then you should also be put in contact with a cardiologist because the kidneys, the heart, the lungs may be affected. Typically the heart. So they'll usually put you in contact with a cardiologist where with your primary care provider and the cardiologist, they can work together to manage that hypertension. So I just want to let anyone, if you're just tuning in, we're speaking to nurse practitioner Jovan Crocker and we're discussing the importance of men's health along with preventative care and maintenance care. And I cannot stress this enough that it is important for our men to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. If you are a brother, a male, or whomever that's in a male's life and you know he does not take care of himself, I want you all in the spirit of this holiday, gift him his health. That means go with him. You know, be his support at this appointment. It's better to learn. The earlier you learn if and what is going on with you, the more likelihood it is to have it reversed, or at least maintenance-wise. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that there's top, when I was looking into it even more, the top three issues that men suffer from, and they almost say it's so silent, is diabetes, mm -hmm. 
which also they associate the diabetes with the lung cancer. Um, high blood, heart disease, which includes high blood pressure and all of that, as well as the cancer. And when I really started looking at anything that was going on with the heart, it separates the symptoms that women feel and experience is not what men mm -hmm. feel and experience. And I know a lot of men just associated with, I pulled a muscle. Mm -hmm. Yep, because oftentimes, you know, men, we typically do a lot of more physical things as, as far as work, things around the mm -hmm. house. So we may, you know, may have been doing things, you know, with our arms and just attributed to, oh, I pulled a muscle or something mm -hmm. like that, when it's really you're having a cardiac event. Mm -hmm. And it, and then also, too, a lot of um, stigma and societal issues play a, a role in how us as black men view the healthcare system. A lot of us are very mistrustful. Um, and I'm not saying that it's not warranted because there are health disparities that we face as black people, but especially as black men. But then we also looking at the societal aspect of it where, like I said earlier, we are expected to push through. We are expected to be the strong person, to carry a lot of things on our shoulders. And it is looked upon us as being weak if we seek out medical care for whatever it is. And again, piggybacking from your, your discussion last month, it's in society and even within our own culture, we are looked at as something is wrong with us if we seek mental health. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to sit back and suck up our feelings, mm -hmm. not express our feelings, not be emotional. And in you doing that, that's creating stress on your body. So you're physically, so now that's going to raise your blood pressure because right. it's going to constrict your vessels. It's going to raise your blood pressure. You're going to have headaches. It can mess with your digestive system. People who are under a lot of stress have issues with constipation, mm -hmm. issues with indigestion because they're not digesting their foods properly. Those type of things all play in together. So I always try to, and it's not that I ever am in a place where I'm making fun of men's health because I genuinely care about you all. We need you, whether you're in our life, personally, family, whatever. We just need your strength. We need your leadership. We need your guidance. You know, we, we need you here, especially for the little boys that don't have male figures in their life. Mm -hmm. So I always say to men, like, do you like having sex? And it, this is this show is about real talk. Do you like having sex? Well, if you do and you want to continue to have good sex, get your health in order. Get your health in order. They do not, most men don't even understand how all those health issues you spoke to in the mental health stress, the worration on them affects their libido and then you also mm -hmm. have men that end up suffering from ED mm -hmm. and other issues because you speak a little bit about that. Absolutely because a big part of sexual health is psychological. So if you have a lot of stress, if you're depressed, you're not going to feel like getting none. You're not going to feel like giving nobody none. Mm -hmm. And then again, it begins to weigh on you physically. So now you have hypertension. So one of the make for for um, mm -hmm. black people, one of the first treatments is a medication called ACTZ, hydrochlorothiazide. Well, one of the side effects of that is erectile dysfunction. Wow. Mm. So y'all look it, at me like I it like, all, no, 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 it no, all plays no, a role. Like <laughs> it all plays a role. You know, you know, physical health. You know, it plays a role in that. Because you have to be physically fit to have sex. You do. You know, so you have to, you know, and a lot of things, you know, now the push is, you know, oh, you have this, just throw some pills at you. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, and I'm glad to see now, especially on social media, that a lot of people now are paying more attention to, um, especially, you know, with... Um, the new plant-based movement, shout out to Aunt, Aunt Tab, but they're now paying more attention to other herbal 
things that they can use to treat what's going on. So I, I don't want you to get into that because now, now you're taking people questions because I pulled some questions from our email um, okay. and I titled that segment, how can we help men improve? What are some things they can do? So stick a pen in that thought okay. right there. Um, I want to go back to the overall 41% mortality rate mm -hmm. of men. Because we're we're losing so many of them. I can't remember the actor's name, but he played on quite the black actor that just passed. Oh, Andre uh, Bre Brewer. Yes. Brewer, I think um, was the last, his last name. It's almost every day now we are losing a black male. Again, whether they're celebrity famous or not celebrity famous, we're losing them because something is being missed and something is not being done. That mortality rate gets higher mm -hmm. and higher and higher. And there's not enough conversations about it as it pertains to men. And as you said earlier, like here, we have hospitals that are specially designed for us. Shout out to Mercy Hospital because y'all are amazing. That's the State of Maryland Women's Center. There's nothing for men, which again is why Shock Talk has taken on a task with other podcasts. Just want to plug that in. Um, the Art of Opinion is another one y'all want to listen into that have these organic conversations about various issues and topics. But how can how can we improve that mortality rate without men? One thing we can do is continue promoting podcasts like this, pushing the conversation, mm -hmm. being an advocate because a lot of the healthcare system is a beast to navigate. And if you already have reservations, it's going to be even that much harder. Having the conversations with our loved ones, with our friends, being there, being supportive, giving them resources, directing them towards resources, um, being there for them. Sometimes you just, they just need another person right. with them. You don't. And sometimes you may not have to say anything, just being present. Exactly. Having mm -hmm. those conversations, but being in their ear. Um, one thing that I've started doing over the last maybe year or so is, because I do a lot, I spend a lot of time on social media, as most of us do. Um, Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say nothing, Chris. Hey, yeah, I will, I'm, you I'm, I'm sick sick it. You I'm sick right, it. Right. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> And what, I, what I've noticed is I'll see, and, and going back to the mental health aspect, I'm seeing um, I, my friends, if they post something, mm -hmm. I'll look at it and I'm like, okay, I'll DM them. If I have their number, I'll text them directly, but I'll DM them, hey, I saw your post, are you good? Wow. You know, just that That's simple awesome. question, are you good, will open something. And, and yes. have them respond, you know, and being that outlet, that non-judgmental, because in 2023, we can be so judgmental mm -hmm. about things. Mm -hmm. Being that non-judgmental person where they can open up about their fears, because that's another thing we as black men, we don't open up about our fears. Mm. Right. We do not open up about our fears. Um, and... Being there and having those conversations, well, look, okay, I understand you have your feelings about, and, you know, not dismissing me, but like, okay, look, you have your feelings about the healthcare system, I get it, but you've been complaining about X, Y, Z for this amount of time. You need to go and get some help. Right. I, I can provide you with the resources that I have and direct you to some other resources, but also we have got to be willing to do the work ourselves as well exactly mm -hmm. and you said something very key earlier on you talked about the issues surrounding just the overall health care for black people as a whole and i, I just want to add to that that we cannot even address begin to address that issue without acknowledging the systemic racism associated with it so you know and people aren't having these organic conversations so for our viewers listening in, here's where you are, have to be accountable in changing that narrative 
when I go to, I shop for a doctor like I would shop for a pair of shoes. Absolutely. Treat your health like you treat your groceries, like you treat your cannabis. I mean, let's let's talk about yeah, it. Absolutely. You, Yet with this now that cannabis in Maryland is legal, it's legal. you know, yeah. I think they said they made like ten million dollars in the first month. And I'm and I'm not surprised, but those those are the conversations that I don't mind having. There's never an excuse from my perspective that a man is not knowledgeable about his health. One, he he should want to be knowledgeable, especially if he has kids. Absolutely. And one of the one of the biggest mistakes we made earlier on and we talked about it in last mm -hmm. month's show was that they got it wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't until August of this year that I realized I had hyperthyroid, they call it Graves' disease. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in a hospital, hooked up to all this stuff, and they're like, well, does it run in your family? And those weren't conversations that we had. Black people don't have those type of conversations. Like, black people shy away, you know, from mental health and everything. So now we're having this conversation today, so I want to encourage all our viewers, go back and have these conversations if your parents are still alive. Hey, do you have this? Is this going on? Is that going on with you? Um, what about my aunts and uncles? Because and write that down. And the minute I found out I had Graves' disease, I called my daughter and I said, write it down. Yep. I said, put it in your phone because it'll go in the cloud. You put this date that your mother told you that she has this, so you can be on the lookout for it. And that's it. Oh, I want to touch on something real quick. In talking with a lot of men, and we have conversations and things of that nature, um, I know a few guys that's dealing with some health issues, mm -hmm. um, but things, but, and it's not that they just don't like the doctor or, or afraid of, you know, going to the doctor. They're afraid of finding out something, you know what I mean? And that's been a big that's issue with a lot of guys that I talk about. They're afraid because they know so many people surrounding them and family members and things of that nature that find out things about themselves when they go to the doctor. They're afraid to find out those certain things about themselves and have to make and have to battle with those things as well. You know what I mean? So, and th that's all I wanted to say. That, that, but that but that's a valid point. But that fear can lead men to a it, it's leading men to an early to grade. an early grade. <laughs> and you and I get it. I get it because it's almost I, sometimes I liken going to the doctor's office or going to the auto shop. Like you take your car in for oil change, and that's all you want to get. But yeah. then you come back, you need new and rollers, you need your brakes, new brakes yeah, rollers, yeah, yeah. tires. Yeah. I get it. Uh -huh. I get it. But that's why those preventative measures are right. so important exactly. because it can catch those things yeah. as they start to evolve. Um, now, if you have not been in a while, then that is certainly a risk, and that's a valid, a valid concern. But it is. 2023 and it's not an excuse and it's and not an excuse it's not an excuse and but we also have had medical advances that you know now people are living longer with certain disease processes think about think back to the AIDS epidemic in the 80s mm -hmm. you know people during that time were dropping left and right from AIDS right. because they didn't know what it was mm -hmm. didn't know how to treat it and now you can live 20 30 plus years or longer with the, with the diagnosis of HIV or AIDS because of the advances that have been made in the treatment of this disease. The same across the board. Just look at treatments for cancers, you know, but you have to start the ball rolling to find out, especially if you are having symptoms. And you, you talked about having those conversations with our family members. We need to have those conversations with ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, my, and what I'm feeling, is it normal? Mm -hmm. You know, right. You had people walking around here that have pains for years and never have it addressed. And then when you go, finally go to have it addressed, now you need, let's say you have hip knee pain. Now you need a knee replacement or a hip replacement because you walked around for years with hip and or knee pain and never got it checked out. Mm -hmm. You know, you walked around for years knowing that if you walk up a flight of steps, you won't have chest pain. You have a blockage somewhere. The good thing is that you know that if you walk up a flight of steps, you're going to have chest pain. That means that that blockage is stable. Right. It's in one spot, 
and you know if you do this certain thing or these certain activities, you're going to have chest pain, but if you stop, it'll, the chest pain will stop. But you still need to get that checked out because you have a cardiovascular issue. Mm -hmm. that is manifested in stable chest pain mm -hmm. that could possibly lead to unstable chest pain, which is going to lead to what? A heart, heart attack, attack and possibly death. And let me, I speak from personal experience with, you know, we, my guest and I go way back. I love him dearly. We go way, way back. And I remember when we would be transporting patients and, you know, you're reading over the paperwork and they would always describe their chest pain like it feel like somebody's sitting on their chest. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I now know that that is real because when I tell you I hollered out, I couldn't move and it seemed like the everything around me just paused. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even breathe. When 911 got there, my heart rate was 194. Mm. They gave me something, begin with a D in the back of the medic that was supposed to reset my heart. And I had been, well, you talking about a whole year, the doctors got it wrong. And I, I was keeping every appointment. And, and this is piggybacking on what you said, like, you have to go. I was going for that pre preventative care because I was like, listen, I'm working out. And it, this ain't normal because I wasn't feeling this. And they got it wrong. You're talking about five different doctors. No, they never did the echocardiogram. And then when they finally did it, they never read it. They never uploaded it. And all the, then they put me on the wrong medication. So it was a prescription error. Mm -hmm. It was so much. And I'm going to keep tying in that systemic racism as it pertains to, and I know this, I just want to say for the viewers, TikTok has blocked my live because the minute I said that systemic racism, <laughs> They, they blocked it. Yeah, it's blocked. Wow, that's crazy. That, it, I, it I wonder what that was. <laughs> that, oh, that's wow. it. My lives have never been blocked. You know, they've never wow, been blocked. Wow, that's crazy. Um, but when you, because I know better, I now do better. And I was like, this is crazy how you put me on the wrong medicine and then was throwing painkillers at me. And if it wasn't for me saying, when did painkillers become the treatment for chest pain and an elevated heart rate mm -hmm. and I, I spent mm -hmm. a week and some days in a hospital over 12 or more doctors was in my room every day just trying to figure it out and I'm telling you had they tried to discharge me and not have it together this black girl wasn't going nowhere and I want and women to do that mm -hmm. women would they call a girlfriend and then the girlfriend would call a girlfriend remember that old mm -hmm. party line we all on the phone and we trying to figure it out and I just want men to get to a place where they have men in their life that get it. Like how you say you'll read the post and then you, hey, you you good. And remember, Chris, we talked about that on your podcast, mm -hmm. how to support each something as simple as that. A lot of men don't do that. They take it like when they say, I'm all right, that you are all right. But they're not looking at body language. They're not looking at how many times you complain about that shoulder pain. Shoulder pain, to my understanding, can also be linked to heart issues. It, it could be a number of things, heart issues being one. And that's what they teach us in, um, in P school. You have a differential diagnosis. So someone comes in with a complaint. It could be a number of things. And we get all of those tests to bring it in mm -hmm. and find out, okay, it's not. And rule stuff out. You'll hear that term, rule out. Okay. We did this, it's not this, we ruled that out. We did this, we did that, it's not this, we ruled that out. And we're, we're narrowing it down to trying to figure out what is going on. Because right. when you go into these hospitals, the doctors, the providers, they don't know everything. You know, and every person presents differently. And that's another thing you, you tapped on too, being an advocate. You have to be an advocate for yourself. Yes. Okay. Especially being a person of color and especially being a man. Because they'll take something general and just try to apply it to you and make it fit mm -hmm. when it don't necessarily fit you personally it fits the overall population but not you personally give, give us a, give us an example of that so we know what to look out for in, in one of those situations okay so i'll i'll do a comparison between um chest pain with men and women mm -hmm. so with men chest pain present presents typically um, in the center of the chest, mm -hmm. radiating to the left arm, mm -hmm. left side of the neck, face, okay. right? That's usually, you know, they come in clutching their chest, you mm -hmm. know, feel like it's something Going pressing on, on the chest. 
Whereas women, typically women manifest with signs of a heart attack. Now your symptoms, Nicole, were a little more classic. But most women have atypical presentation, meaning it varies from the normal. It usually presents in women as GI issues. Mm. Yeah. They feel like they have indigestion. Mm. Well, I had burning. that issue. It, remember I said it had been a year. So mm -hmm. I went through through that, that um, episode of, of the GI issues. Then it was the shortness of breath. And here's, and I don't mind being transparent, because the doctors couldn't find anything definitively going on with me, I started chalking what I was going through physically to I'm stressed out because I was working a lot. I was still mm. teaching all these classes. I was doing a, flying up and down the bellway in the friendly skies, doing this, that, and the other, and was still having that issue. Mm -hmm. and, it, and what scared me the most is when the doctors came in and was like, probably because you were so busy, it saved your life. Mm. They was like, this blood pressure should have took you out. Yeah. That thing was off the Richter. So I can only imagine what our men are actually going through. And they're suffering in silence and shame on people in society for making light of it. But it, it's got to it's gotta get better. I don't want it to get worse. And men just have to be now held accountable. Whether I care or not, he needs to care about his health. Absolutely. And the one place that a lot of this could or could be a starting point is the barbershops. Mm. Mm, say but that again. Is the barbershops. Now, on the one instance, because now I'm noticing barbershops have, I've been going to my barber since high school, so I go to his house. He, he cuts at his house. But I have noticed that a lot of barbershops have kind of changed their, you know, dynamics and how they do things. Mm. But that's still a, a, a place where guys go, where we can go, talk a whole bunch of shit. Right. Talk a whole, you know, talk about anything. You you know, in the barbershop, you can talk about anything. You can get anything. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where some of those conversations can be had. And you don't have to be a healthcare professional or anything. Just sit sit back and, and pay attention to how, just think, guys, how many, the, the, the amount of stuff and the, the different levels of stuff you talk to your barber about. You talk to right. your barber about the, the chick. Or the right, dude that you didn't smash the night before. Car issues and you get car the Car issues yeah. where you can get the hookup. They can tell you where to go to get the good food. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Start having conversations or or, uh, or or even listening to your barber, what they're saying. Right. Yeah, man, you know, I've been having some issues with my legs. My legs are swelling up. Your legs are swelling up, man. You go get that checked out. And then make it make a conscious effort to follow up when you go back because you know we're going to go back the next week or the next right, or the, right. the week after because we're going to go at least two times a month to get to get tightened up. Mm -hmm. Follow up. Hey, man, last time I was here, you talked about your legs. Well, are you going to get that checked out? You know, holding them accountable. And the same thing for the barber. You know, my barber had um, had a knee replacement. So I asked him and he was cutting hair on his walker. I was like, that's why? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I said, why are you still cutting hair? Wait a minute. Shout out to your barber because that's gangster right there he on had, the wall. He had a knee replacement. And when I went to go get my hair, my, my beard um, shaped up, he had his walker in the corner. I, and he was wow. using the chair and the, the, the counter to as leverage. I'm like, wow. man. Why are you still cutting on your... I, and I'm asking him, you doing your rehab? Man, I stopped doing that re... Why did you stop doing your rehab? Mm -hmm. Well, well, they wasn't doing it, but I got... But he had some stuff. You know, the bands and all of that stuff to do his own rehab. So, he took some he of his own illness. But, yeah. okay. you know, holding him accountable. And then he asked me, because he knows what I do. So, he always asking me questions. But that's a perfect place for these conversations, just, just the conversation. You don't have to give them, if you have resources, fine. But if you don't, you can at least have that conversation. Man, you need to go get that checked out. You got kids, you right. know, you know, kid, you and you gotta meet people where they are. Because a lot of the, of the issues that we as black men have is, in addition to the mistrust of the healthcare community, that's a lot of lack of ed education. Mm -hmm. Because you mm -hmm. do have some places, you know, like Park West. Um, what's the other one over on Urban? Um, goodness. 
Baltimore Medical Systems, I think that's what it's called, um, Jai, those types of Chase Brexit where they focus on and healthcare for the homeless. And healthcare for the homeless, things like that, where they focus on underserved, underrepresented populations where you can right. get resources and they can direct you. And the, the good thing that I like about places like Chase Brexton, it's kind of like an all in one. Right. You and know, you can go. For the you can yeah. go to that one place and get multiple things. You can see a primary care provider. Mm -hmm. You can see a mental health specialist. You can mm -hmm. see another specialist, whether it's cardiology, nephrology, pulmonology. Those types of things, all right there. So I want to add another res resource, and all of this will be in the replay. Um, another resource is digital. You can go to www careorg.com you put in whatever your need is and it'll give you a list and if you, you can even narrow it down by your zip codes um, also if you're in the Baltimore inner city area formerly known as Bon Secor if you go to Grace Medical Center up on the third floor health care for the homeless is there if you are uninsured they will sign you up that day for health insurance and in 30 days your medical assistance is activated but yeah. You don't was, have. You don't have to I was going to ask to about that, the, the, the insurance part of things, because a lot of men do not uh, do not have coverage. And that is why know? I'm yeah. I'm given yeah. given that resource. Yeah. You know, um, listen, we shop talk as well as all of their opinion podcast is here to be that buffer in between you being stagnant, stagnant, or not having access to resources. At this point, there's no excuse because I keep replaying. If people follow me, I am the post queen. I don't care if they get on your nerves. It's something on my page of resource and information that you need. Um, so, again, I'm going to post all those resources for you. If you go to Grace Medical Center, formerly known as Bonsacore, 2000 West Baltimore Street, third floor, health care for the homeless, you can walk in. You do not need an appointment. If you do, listen, this is me taking away all excuses. If you do not have an operating phone, they will link you to getting a temporary telephone where you can use it. And it costs you nothing but effort and some time. Mm -hmm. So those are several resources for you. But to your point, Christopher, you're absolutely correct. A lot of people, men, do not have health insurance. And again, that's disheartening to me because... Women have these conversations so much so Shock Talk was actually birthed. This is my lactician Brie. Um, shout out to Brie and Wanda. Y'all are not here today. Miss you, love you both. Oh, no, you didn't give no explanation why the other ladies weren't here, nothing like that. I know. I just well, first just of all, it's your fault. Going. You you threw me reaching for stuff oh, and God. giving me the evil eyes. <laughs> See, this is one of the reason why men are so stressed out. Cause oh, my God. That's what, you know what? We get blamed for everything. Let me check myself. I apologize because you mad or your feelings mad. Okay. All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, but, that, but that links back to what he was saying about the lack of insurance also because, but again, and that circles back to health care disparities mm -hmm. and based on race because yeah. a lot of times, You'll see when when you when you dig further deeper into that research that you talked about, you'll see that the lower the socioeconomic status, Absolutely. the poorer the health, mm -hmm. and it goes back to because a lot of people now their health insurance is tied to their jobs. True, and it's expensive. And it is expensive. It is, it is expensive. <laughs> Even even with the job paying a portion, so just think about those who have to go through the healthcare exchange. Right. Because people who talk, you know, want to talk negatively about Obamacare, quote unquote, or the Affordable Care Act, but it at least created the opportunity Absolutely. for everyone to have Absolutely. access to healthcare. Now, what? But now it's like, can I afford it? But then that goes back to Medicaid. Because Medicaid was established for low income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, with those government assisted or government rooted programs, you have to do some legwork. You won't have to do some legwork. But a lot of people, a lot of men don't have insurance because lack of employment, which right. if you don't have a job, you can't get you can't insurance. Get insurance right. If you don't have a job, you don't have money to go to the healthcare exchange to pay for insurance. And if you, know, you don't have kids, sometimes that disqualifies that you. Sometimes that disqualifies program. you. And mm -hmm. then 
then for some of these state funded or government funded programs, the bar is set to where even though you're not working, somehow you're still making, making too, too much, much. which like, is crazy. But but there are avenues that you can go through. And the one thing that I do direct a lot of people and they, a lot of people tend to shy away because, again, you it, it comes with a, a certain deal of legwork to do. Visit your local department of social services. Mm -hmm. They can, Your local health department. Mm -hmm. They can give you the resources that you need. Now, they may not be, you know, the department of health, the health department may not be able to, like, sign you up for anything, but they can at least say, okay, you need health insurance. We can direct you to the Department of Social Services or to this website. Now, you may have to go to the library, go to a friend's house, you know, do whatever you got to do. Or use that cell phone. Or use, use, use your cell phone. phone anything else. And yeah. go on these sites to sign up for this stuff. Right. You know, there are resources out there, but the biggest thing is just we have to rally around each other. Absolutely. We have to rally around each other and try to help help. The next man figure it out. I have health insurance, you know, and I and I've been on both sides because I I had because believe it or not, even being a, I was a nurse at that that time when COVID hit, I was in my um, MP program and I was working multiple part time jobs, piecing them together for full time. So I was out of work for seven months during when the, when COVID hit. So I had to get my own health insurance through the exchange. True. Is that the same as Cobra? Which is expensive. No, okay. no, I wasn't even because I Cobra ain't. No, <laughs> you ain't want to go back I, to the strip club. I didn't. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cobra is expensive. Cobra is extremely I had to expensive. Pay Cobra. Um, but I had to go through the exchange, and I was still paying like three hundred and fifty dollars a month just for myself mm. through wow. the exchange. Now that's because I prefer to have Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay. There were some other options that were not as expensive. But also, too, I, you know, I always caution people, you get what you pay for. But I would rather have something than not have anything. Because in my part-time role as a case manager, I see patients come in and they have no insurance. And then they can't come in for chest pain mm -hmm. when they do all the tests. Oh, sir, you've had a heart attack. Now you need bypass. Now you need a cardiac catheter. And you have no insurance. Mm. Now the hospital will sign you up for emergency Medicaid because that covers them and that hospital stay. Mm -hmm. But once you get out, you don't have anything. You don't have anything. Wow. The emergency Medicaid will cover the hospital and the hospital stay. Mm. Then, but what they can do is they what are can. The social workers for. But see that then the so, that's when the case management and the social work department gets involved, okay. and then we. Try to, and we get involved with the financial department and we try to get them signed up for Medicaid. Okay. So things do happen, but that's when we begin to see patients that will come in who are um, uninsured or who have really poor insurance. Mm -hmm. But at least they have something. Mm -hmm. you know. But again, that preventative stuff, those conversations all happen before you get to the hospital. Because once you get to the hospital, you're in what we call an acute phase. So now something is going on. You might not have a diagnosis, but something is going on that brought you to the hospital. Whether you came by yourself, somebody brought you, or you came 911. But if you were going to the doctors regularly, at least annually, mm -hmm. you could be on top of it. That's why now the push is for seeing your PCP. Urgent, you, if you notice, urgent cares are popping, popping up all up over. Because yeah. I... Personally, I think the, the big push is for to really make hospitals more acute. Mm -hmm. You have this issue, we're going to treat this issue, and now you go back to the community and deal, and your primary care provider deals, deals with it, your specialist deals with it. Mm -hmm. Because that's really what the hospital is for, for acute issues. Right, and, and you're right. I do notice that there's an influx of urgent cares popping up, so much so... Um, the healthcare organization that I work for, they have them all over, and it, they're strategically placed. They're like in walking distance, either right across the street from mm -hmm. the hospital, because you and I both know that many years ago, people were using the emergency room 
for their PCP. But they still do because the, the caveat with urgent cares are if you do not have insurance, they don't have to treat you. Wow. I just told somebody that and they argued me up and down. Mm -hmm. He was like, that's not true. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah that is true. If you do not I have insurance, it. they don't have, urgent kids do not have to treat you. Yeah. ERs have to treat you mm -hmm. regardless of your insurance status. So, and people use the ERs as their PCPs because PCPs are overwhelmed because mm -hmm. of a lot of, because, you know, people are um, sicker, but they're still, they're um, living longer. Even though we have, we're losing a lot of people, people are still living longer. So, it may be difficult for you. Let, let's say if you tomorrow, one of us wakes up, you know, and we have some sore throat or something. We may want to try to get into our PCP. Number one, it's a weekend. Mm -hmm. So, we might not be able to get in. Mm -hmm. Or, we call the PCP. Oh, well, we can get you in on Thursday. That's four day, four or five days away. So right. what am I going to do? And I don't, and I don't have insurance, or I don't want to pay the copay that's associated with the urgent care. So I'm going to go to the ER. And, and it makes sense because I've been that person trying to schedule, like you know, when a hospital discharge, they give you instructions. But I want to shout out St. Agnes because they were awesome. They already knew what I would have to deal with, which you just spoke to. Mm -hmm. Now you're trying to follow the instructions, you know, and schedule these appointments, but they're giving you one month, two months, sometimes three months out. You're talking about 90 days of seeing a doctor to make sure I'm stable or whatever. So St. Agnes actually scheduled but the, the good thing that I like that um, hospitals are implementing now are like patient navigators yes. where yes. they will, that person or group of person's job is to, when you, when someone is getting discharged from the hospital, if they have your, the specialist information or even your PCP's information, mm -hmm. they will reach out on behalf of you because yes. some offices, if they're getting a call from a hospital, they are more apt to getting you scheduled sooner. As opposed to you calling directly. Right. So, so. I, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about how can we help men improve their care. So just their their health, overall health, you know, not just the physical, but as well as the mental health part. So just some things that stood out to me that I talk about a lot is um, changing your nutritional practice. Oh, absolutely. Now, one of the things I did, shout out to me. Seven months coming up on eight, no meats. I eat no land meats. I only eat from the sea. That's okay. Me. That's okay. all. That's all I eat. Um, and it makes a difference. But let me just say this disclaimer: Please talk to your provider um, before you make that decision. Of course, that is what I did. Had that conversation, and that was another thing that helped me out. Mm -hmm. My past hospitalization was that I had already changed the foods that I was eating. Um, get moving. I, I do a lot of posting videos and, and we leave, live in an era where people don't read. They, they yes. you know, they just watch if it's funny. Ha ha ha. They never think to click them words and see what it said. And sometimes my stuff is real basic. It'll say, have you moved your body today? Mm -hmm. Have you moved your body? Or it'll say, find your fit and rock it. You gotta get moving even if you walk up and down two steps you do that long enough let mm -hmm. me tell you <laughs> let me just tell you you gonna feel the burn and you're gonna feel the difference but we, and the older we get and i noticed you talked about that a little bit earlier on with the age you know one is a blessing from god that that's the goal you come into the world you age gracefully but let's not only age visually gracefully but internally a lot mm -hmm. of people looking good with their age but inside they just it's like so, uh, is a hot mess so work on your nutritional practice work on moving your body something else i noted was vitamins i noticed with us women they tell us either take a probiotic mm -hmm. supplement i eat yogurt yogurt i'm not going to be taking no probiotic pills so mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something men, I don't know how y'all weird bodies work or anything. But that, that's just more so for gut health mm -hmm. to promote um, proper elimination mm -hmm. because um, a lot of times we, especially if you do eat a lot of meat, especially red meat, it's harder to digest. So that red meat stays in your intestines. Um, yeah. So that eating yogurt just helps 
push it push through. it through mm -hmm. um, increasing fiber intake mm -hmm. to um, help decrease any um, leftover stool that's in the system just to help move that out mm -hmm. um, increasing your water intake yes that helps a lot that helps with your skin that helps with um, internal organs because again it helps to um, Anything that's in the, especially because uh, our gut plays a big role in our physical health as well. Mm -hmm. So if we're carrying around a lot of stuff in our gut, drinking water, high fiber intake will help push that stuff mm -hmm. out. Right. Um, definitely, definitely physical movement. Um, paying more attention to the things that um, you eat, such as um, high fat foods, high um, fatty foods. Um, Caffeine. I know a lot of us are addicted <laughs> to caffeine, but paying more attention to the your your caffeine intake, um, your sugar intake, those types of things because you want to ward off because you know even in my education as a nurse and a nurse practitioner, we are black people as a whole. We are prone to just about. <laughs> Every ailment, high blood pressure, diabetes, cardiovascular mm -hmm. disease, mm -hmm. neurological disorders, things like that. Mm -hmm. So those things can help um, ward off those things. Um, taking Definitely taking your vitamins, especially if you are deficient in any uh, vitamins. It's, a lot of those things can be found in your foods. You just have to alter your food intake. Going back to um, a lot of people now are, are adopting more of a uh, vegetarian or plant-based plant lifestyle. Um, and then doing your research. Um, what foods are high in what? You know, um, and then begin to incorporate a lot of people, you know, rag on vegans. And I said, you know, the vegan lifestyle is not that bad. It definitely takes some getting used to. Um, dis and dis definitely discipline, especially if you go full vegan. That's no animal product. The healthy vegan lifestyle, because you know, just because it's vegan doesn't mean that it's healthy. The health, okay. exactly. You know, the healthy vegan. Because somebody yeah. pointed out that Oreos are vegan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> so are French fries and so are French fries, right? Yeah. So, but health, yes, healthy vegan option, and and did, but also in saying that, don't deny yourself. Because when you do that, you crave it more. Mm -hmm. Don't deny yourself. If you want to have something sweet, have something sweet. But don't do like like I do. Don't eat uh, two slices of cake. Eat one. You know, I'm I'm hard. I'm hard. I'm, I'm look. How big of a slice of cake we talking about? Because right, right. one of my yes, slices of cake might be two. You know now. You, <laughs> right. You know, like you eat a slice of cake like that, you just break it. You know, ahead. Yeah. You know, start somewhere. You know. When I you used to drink multiple sodas a day. Caffeine because I'm, Look. Well, so I am a coffee drinker, but even for me, I had to fully listen to my doctor and become disciplined because the caffeine in me was twofold. It also developed abnormal lumps in mm. my breasts okay. to the point where they would be so sore. I would be. I was that person when I consumed too much cafe, I was walking like this, you know, like the big swole guys in the gym, but I ain't had no muscle, it was fat, but I had them lumps that was super sore, so mm -hmm. yeah, I've got that. But also for you, you said you had graves, that, that's uh -huh. hyperthyroidism, right? Yes. So be careful because that caffeine, because you're already in a pretty it much a wrapped up it. state, yeah, it, 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 it can trigger it. it. Yeah. Yeah, it so, it. yeah, yeah, just but you know, just taking those small, those small incremental changes and being consistent with it can evolve into something bigger. Just like you said, you decided one day, okay, I'm going to stop eating land meat. Okay. And I'm sure you, it just didn't stop that day. You had to get, get into a right. groove with it right. because it's like now, cause now it's like, okay, well, can I how can I fix my fish this way? How, yeah. what else can I eat? You know, different things like that. So it's going to be in a transition period, but you know, you want to make sure that you are the, the the healthiest version that you can be. And that you'll begin to see that begin to go across and have a ripple effect. Because you start removing those things and then you'll notice your blood pressure is going down. Mm -hmm. Your weight is going down. Your knees aren't hurting as much because mm -hmm. now, <laughs> see, because now you're slowly starting to 
take the weight off that's putting right. pressure on the knees. It begins to have a ripple effect. And then once you, so now when you start going to the doctor, the doctor will be telling you, oh, your blood pressure was 180 over 90 last, last, um, last year when you came in. Now mm -hmm. it's 170. But I over know, 60 or I whatever, you know? that men mask their illness. I almost want to believe that men are aware of what's going on with we them. Are. Some, and they mask it by overcompensating mm -hmm. in other areas. And typically they use playing sports, basketball. And then they're then they you start to hear them if their rib cage is hurting. They never equate that to something medical mm -hmm. going on. Now mm -hmm. they're saying that pain was attributed to the game and somebody rushed them mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, so I just want our viewers, and I mention that because as women, we need to do our due diligence as mm -hmm. well. Especially if you're in a relationship, you should be paying attention. These are also conversations you should be having with your partner. Absolutely. Um, or and do stuff, and and not think that even strengthens the relationship when y'all do stuff together. Whether it be just go for a walk, go to the gym. Um, if you pick you up some vitamins, even if he's been telling you no, I firmly believe, depending on what your rapport is with him, pick him up some vitamins anyway. Mm -hmm. Get him that workout outfit and be like, come on, babe, let's just work out in the house. But we have to be more proactive yeah. as well to support our men. Yeah, and going back to um, the sports thing, you're absolutely right. And not to discount that, because that very well may be what the pain is coming from. But if you're having that pain more than a few days, right. nine times out of ten, it's not related to that event. I don't know, because um, the last time I played basketball, I ran full court with some young kids, and that pain didn't go away after two days. That pain, that's <laughs> that's pain. You're right. Now, that pain you, stayed there. You think you're 40? I'm 45. I just turned 45. Like the okay. knees is yeah, that okay. pain stayed so, there. Right. Right. My, knees, my knees went bonkers on me. They, they cussed me right. out all kinds of ways. But also, see, in, in, in that... You got to know your limitations. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I found you know, out fast. Yeah. 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 I found so, out fast. So, so, yeah, you know, you, you don't want to discount that because once you once your body recovered from the shock, you was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. But sometimes, but you wasn't having no issues with your knees prior to or nothing that has been going on ongoing. Man, you know, once you get to a certain age, you get little Absolutely. aches and cramps mm -hmm. and things that wasn't there before. That you might get for a couple of weeks and then they might go away. Um, it may come back. It may reoccur. You may walk up a step the wrong way. You right. may step down the wrong way. So I mean that comes and goes. And as men, it's like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. Like we always been talking about, we're 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 built to just like say, oh, it's nothing. Push right. through. You know, we push through it. We it's a little pain. We deal with it for a little while and then it's all right. We chalk it up. It's just you know we're good. You know I'm good. Right. As long as I can still move my arm and move around and run if I need to, then. I don't need to get seen, you know what I mean? Because I don't want it to be something else. You know and that mean? goes so. back to like when I'm when I do a physical on a patient and let's say if you come in to my office and I do a physical on you, you have James on. There is a, a maneuver that I do that I'll have you lay, lay flat on the table and I'll ma manipulate your leg and I'll feel your knee. I don't like so, the way all this is sounding. Sound. <laughs> no. You know, you know. So you, know, already, you already say that once you come into an office if they don't tell you to get naked, <laughs> then, well, then you naked. ain't going to the wrong, you know not what I mean? Not naked. No, I don't like that. Not naked. You said take your clothes off. I didn't want to hold in on that. Don't be manipulating my legs and all that kind of stuff and have me laying flat, manipulate my... No, no, boy, I'm joking. But, I'm joking. But I, all, I, all we do is we put our hand on the knee and move and raise, move the knee back mm -hmm. and forth. And what we're feeling for is crepitus okay. to see if we feel like anything that feels a little crunchy, grinding. grinding. Yeah, yeah. Because that just lets us know, okay, you might have some cartilage that's di disintegrated mm -hmm. over time. That's but but that that comes with age. Of course. So, mm -hmm. you know, but we feel that, okay, we're going to send you for an x-ray mm -hmm. just to see what's there, get the results back. If it's what we thought it was, it's nothing more that we can do. Just keep a watch over mm -hmm. it. You take some over-the-counter medication if you have some pain. That's it. But if we get the result back and they're saying, oh, you have a fracture or something, then something else needs to be okay. done. Okay. But again, that goes back to going to the doctor regularly. Mm -hmm. right. Because those things are assessed. And especially if, because one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to get a history and physical. We're going to ask you, what did you come in today? Are you having any pains? Mm -hmm. Things like that. You know, so we're going to 
get that information so that po points us in the direction the that right, we need to right. go. Mm -hmm. right. So that again goes back to preventative measures because the goal is to prevent it from happening before it actually happens because with hypertension you can start adjusting your diet. Mm -hmm. We don't have to put you on medication. Mm -hmm. You can adjust your diet and that may cost you $20, $40 a month. Whereas opposed to a medication may cost you $50, mm -hmm. $60 a month. Mm -hmm. Or more if you don't have insurance. Medication you know? is high. Yeah. So I want to go back to something you said earlier on because this is a specific group of men that I want to address with this. You talked about how sometimes the test will be a false positive, which is good. And that false positive can possibly come for men that work out a lot. Mm -hmm. So let me just park right there because as I know fitness instructors because I'm one. And they let these men, and women do it too, they're working out every day. And it's almost to the point where they get frustrated if their students don't want to work out every day. And when I started researching, because it it would be times I couldn't pull myself out the bed. And I was like, this ain't normal. You know, I, I get that whole pain is a gain or whatever those sayings are or whatever. But if it's several days, like what Chris was saying, and you still haven't physically recovered, that's an issue. And these male instructors, I wonder how many of them know that, that it could give them a false positive or it could be something going on because they're literally working out every day in their body, their muscles in their body have no time to recover. And that's the thing. That's why. Because they, you, you need to have that time to recover. You need to, because you're constantly working those muscles, stretching those muscles, building those muscles. Those muscles need a moment to relax mm -hmm. and settle into what you're trying to get them to do. You're trying to grow these muscles and things like that. But they also need rest. Everything and everybody needs rest right. because then you need to recuperate because if you constantly pushing, 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 eventually what's going to happen is it's going to give out. Mm. Right. And then that's when, where injuries come in at. Or like you said with the students, then you have people that go walk away and don't come back mm -hmm. because it's like you, you're not giving me any time to rest. To rest. Right. You need those rest periods. And because you also have to understand you're putting your body through changes mm -hmm. and if you're taking any types of supplements it's affecting your body's function and how your body processes things which could lead to some of those abnormal tests which in a normal person it may mean something but because you're doing all of these other things in, in, re, in relation to your fitness that's why it's causing these abnormal test results so that needs to be taken into consideration when those results are read, which is why the history of physical is so important because we need to know if you are a, an athlete or um, mm -hmm. a serial fitness person where you work out a lot because yeah. that would let us, you know, would let us know why certain things may look a certain way. Okay. Now that I didn't know. So again, to all my fitness instructors, my male fitness instructors, when you're completing the H&P, the history and physical, you want to make sure you're transparent and you tell them honestly, because that is a question on the screen and forms. Do you work out? If so, how many times mm -hmm. a week? And I know personally people have fabricated. They are say three to four times doing good and well. And I was guilty of it a few years ago. I was literally working out seven days a week, mm -hmm. anywhere from two, sometimes four times a day. God forbid if I was doing a fitness event, which typically they last anywhere from three to four hours. According to your TikTok videos, you work out. Mind your business. <laughs> my, my, um, Way more than that. On, mind your business. <laughs> mind your business. But also, the t and, and, and detailing the types of exercises that you do. If you do more cardio, strength training, weightlifting, mm -hmm. those all play a role. Because I know typically athletes have lower um, heart rates, lower vital signs than yes. your average person. So you would want to know that where, where if I examine a an athlete and their heart rate is 54, 55. That's, it's normal, but it's outside of the normal range. But because you're conditioned 
that's why it's lower, so it wouldn't be anything of concern for me, but right. for a regular person. And that's that's because your heart is not work it doesn't have to work as hard because correct. it's stronger and because and, and you because and you're more blood condition. flow, more oxygen. Correct. Okay, okay. Right. Correct. So I I'm getting ready to put you on the spot. Um so we are gonna make the conversation with our men's a yearly thing. So already is on the calendar for June next year. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to be a guest on that particular panel. If you can't be a guest in that June episode, then to come back one of those open months of next year. Absolutely. We would like to have a male voice. And for me, it's imperative that we have a, let me abbreviate it, a AA, not the degree or the meetings, but <laughs> AA person here because, though again, those are the natural organic conversations that we need to be having. One of the things um, that was made clear to me by my PCP, who is from Nigeria, is that she hates that BMI chart. She's like, oh, that, yeah, that BMI, BMI she's is like, not for that us. She's like, that BMI chart is not for us, it's you not. know. And we, we get caught up into society's labels and what they say is the norm not taking into consideration, depending on your cultural practice, your genetics, and so on and so on, that does not apply to you. Now, to them, I'm morbidly obese at this size. <laughs> well, I am still considered morbidly obese. Morbidly? Yeah. It, yeah. It is, and and to, to the viewers, definitely, especially for us, definitely keep in mind that those metrics that they compare us to are not, and, and it, it's still not, but the good thing is it, the needle is starting to be moved okay. because... Um, Within the last five years, I want to say, at least for um, kidney patients, okay. they have um, re, re, re done something different with how they determine the level of kidney failure or something. And it, I think it takes race out of it because they found that it was, was, not, um, was not accurate when it came to um, minorities. So, but a lot of that stuff, like you said, does, it's not... It's not. It did not take us into account. It did not take in our body mass, our density, bone density, things mm -hmm. like that. So they still compare, you know, use that as a guide, but it really is not for us. Right, and that that again, I'm going to keep saying it that you have to be proactive in your own care. Another thing that my PCP she said to me is she's like write a list of all the medicines you're absolutely not going to take. She said, and tell them, keep it in your chart. Whenever mm -hmm. you can go see the cardiologist, hey, did you get my, I'm not taking that. Yep. I, there's no side effect. I just don't want to take it. Um, so for our men, if you're just tuning in again, or you're watching this replay, we're speaking to nurse practitioner, Jovan Crocker. We're talking about the importance of men's health with a focus on maintenance care as well as preventative care. Please make sure you go back, you watch the whole footage because there's some vital and helpful information inside of there. What earlier you said you work at a clinic. Are you accepting patients? No, That's not at this time. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> but the clinic is and it is okay. um and I'm this is gonna be my plug for her um for her clinic. Um she is accepting patients. I cannot recall what insurances she accepts. But it is Taylor Integrated Health at Garwin Medical Center. You you remember Janae? Oh, Janae girl, Taylor. Hey, I'm Janae you, Taylor. Janae and Maurice. They opened okay. up their, their clinic. I remember seeing I that. I think okay. she's. I know it's been over five years, but she's my PCP. Okay. Um, and she sees patients um Monday through Friday, okay. nine thirty to two. Okay. And um, she's right at um, Garwin Medical Center, Suite two hundred. And I just um. um I help out with her when I can because I'm I have a full five five day a week full time job. So I just um help her out whenever I can. Typically I do sports physicals with her. Okay. Um every now and again I'll do a regular physical if she needs me to help or whatever. But um because I'm at work during bankers hours when she's operating, so I really can't help Why, that much. Y'all bunny ears. Huh? The, the bunny the cold face. The cold, well that's you know, the um uh, nine to five, eight hour during the day My type. Is ten. No, not for me. Oh, for uh, me it is. No, mm -mm, no, longer. eight hours, eight point five, and I'm out. Um, but yes, uh, Taylor Integrated Health is accepting patients. Um, she is an awesome nurse practitioner, and she looks like us. 
she is HBCU educated and she listens and that's the and that's the thing the representation and that's that's one of the reasons why I became a nurse practitioner because I did and a nurse because I didn't see anybody that looked like me mm. right you and know that's African American right. or male that was going to be one of my questions I like kind of you know what what got you into health, men's health and well in the health period I always um I since I've known. yeah I've always because I, I I graduated from Dunbar with my EMT so mm -hmm. I graduated and immediately went to work at a private ambulance company okay did that I did several different ambulance companies mm -hmm. um and during that 10 year period because I graduated in 1999 from high school and I got my bachelor's in 2009 okay um, from Coppin with my um, my BSN Great. so during that time I was an EMT then a nur uh, nursing assistant mm -hmm. then a nurse and then a nurse practitioner okay okay so I've come up through the ranks so to speak okay um, but I always just had that spirit of helping people and mm -hmm. the more I went into nursing I noticed the disparities with us, mm -hmm, of course, you know, yeah. but it's not, it's not a specific realm because typically, like I said, unless it's something dealing with our genitals, mm -hmm. we have the same issues that everybody else have, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. diabetes and yeah. stuff, which is why it's not anything specific like OBGYN, mm -hmm. but this piece, the education piece is, you know, more of where I can focus to, okay. to reach brothers and go into those different areas okay. because you know, and it's, it's getting better, mm -hmm. but we still got some brothers out there that is really playing Russian roulette with their health. Oh, yeah. I, really. I might be one of them. Okay. They, when was the last time you went to your PCP? Uh, See, might have been a, than a year. Might have been a, it's been longer than a year, but I, I get checkups. I, okay. I've, I've had other checkups for, you know, me on certain things. Okay. And, you know, sports, physicals, and things of that nature for okay. some reason. So I've had physicals. So you and you do have health insurance. insurance. Yes, I have okay. insurance. Yeah. So at least that's that's half the battle. So yeah. you know, and like you said, definitely take your time in selecting your providers. Mm -hmm. Um making sure they look like you. Mm -hmm. And don't be you afraid know. to provide a shot. Like I And don't. And if you yeah. get a provider and you don't feel like they're listening to you, find another one. Find okay. that, that Find I was one. gonna say that that is your cue. You don't listen. You don't need to see the fire to know that that's not gonna pan out to be anything for you. You have the right to switch, especially if you're paying for your insurance. Especially. I hear people say all the time, but it's through my insurance. I'm like, and who's paying the bulk of your insurance? You, you are, are. You are the gatekeeper. And that's great, okay. and that's fine that it's through your insurance. Go to your your insurance has a website. Exactly. Go to their website. Exactly. And find somebody else. Now, a lot of times, the websites don't have pictures. I know what's the, this new website that I've been seeing, ZocDocs or something like that, where I think they have pictures of the doctors. Okay. Um, nice but one. yeah, you can go to your insurance company website and look up, and you can put in your demographic information or the zip code you live in. If you're looking for a specialist or you're looking for family practice or internal medicine. And just go through, look at where they're located. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of profile, like look at the name and see, right. okay, right. this person's name is Josh Firestein. Oh. That's not going to be somebody yeah, but of, that's a minority, but they may be a great They may be, yeah, be provider. Are we going to trust doctors that look like us? Because we have an issue with trusting our own people sometimes. And that's also a problem. You understand what I'm saying? So That's also a problem. Well, I did, but I will be honest to your point, Chris, and say that it was sketchy and what's crazy is that, first let me say, I switched back to my once again provider. She was my provider initially and here's how she became my provider when I first started at the job I'm currently at now. I suffer from real bad migraines and Johns Hopkins had did several um, spinal taps because right around that time meningitis you know mm -hmm. was on the rise. So fast forward I had cut the lights off in my office and someone went and got her. When she came she took her pen light, looked at my eyes, pulled out her prescription pad. She said take this and go see the eye doctor. Now keep in mind I went to one of quote unquote, the best hospitals. Mm -hmm. And they could not figure out what was wrong. She took her pen light and looked. After that, I went and it was like, oh, you have a stigma in mm -hmm. both eyes. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You just need a good pair of glasses. So I paid for those good pair of glasses, and I've been good since. And you had excited. And I went back to her office, and I said, you are my doctor. Mm -hmm. Where's your office at? Okay. But then when we were acquired by another organization, they strategically made it so that you can only go to their doctor. So don't allow yourself to be strong on Do your job if you're paying. So I then called member service and was like, hey, how do I get out of this, especially after my hospitalization in their errors? And he was like, oh, well, you know, you're going to have to pay extra. I, did, I honestly did not care if it was $200, which is true. So they was like, well, this is what the PPO is, and it is very, very expensive for the PPO. But my health is worth it. So what, so is, whole, what, is, what is PPO? Primary, primary physician option where you don't have to go in the network. Okay. I can go you anywhere. Go now, now the, here's the hit with that is that the copay will be higher, and they mm -hmm. will pay up to 80% mm. of the cost for the doctor. And again, my point is, don't be cheap with your health because some people will say, "Yeah." They, who is your Who is your insurance group? I'm gonna tell you off air. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, I, I, okay. I'm gonna tell I you off air. Okay, I, I, okay, I got it. But um, do not be cheap. You're not cheap with your tennis shoes, your sneakers. That I know part. a lot of sneakers lovers. You're not cheap with the rims. You're not cheap with the detail on your car. Don't low bowl. See, but we're, we're only speaking to a specific group of people because everybody can't afford insurance. That is everybody true. Everybody can't afford not to be cheap. And then you, you gotta, you gotta, you also gotta talk to the people that's on the HMO. That's you know, I mean, that's dealing with, uh, you know, uh, Medicare and things of that nature. You know, what I mean, they don't have a choice of, 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 you know, they have a choice who they can pick as their PCP or, or their healthcare provider, but they don't have a choice as to what kind of generic meds they may be getting or well, things yeah. of that nature. You know what I mean? Yeah. So on that on that respect you're absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so but they still have they still have a say on on who who they see because right. you can still work within the confines of your right. network. Okay. You just have to pick so, up the phone. That's and what I, I always express right. that okay. unless it's somebody that you just absolutely prefer to go to because my thing is I am all for maintaining the coin mm -hmm. you, you know mm -hmm. so if you have insurance stay within your network yeah. because yeah. the minute yeah. you step outside that's going to be an extra cost extra and, and that's right. for me that the piece of purpose of having insurance of course yeah. you know unless that just a percentage of the insurance won't will not cover uh -huh. um but you can still again go back to that your insurance website mm -hmm. and you can because it'll tell you it'll have an option for in network and out of network mm -hmm. and just stay within your network Mm -hmm. and, and, and bounce around and you don't want to that's not the ideal situation because keep right. in mind you're bouncing around and so is your medical mm -hmm. record you know so you don't want things to get to fall between fall in the cracks mm -hmm. but you can stay within the confines okay. of your um of your insurance company absolutely because the minute you step mm -hmm. out then that's going to be an extra fee yeah. and that's why i said it has to be accountability and when i talk about that i don't just mean you knowing about your health that also means if you have to call, as you were just saying, and try to switch but stay in the confinements of your network so you don't incur costs, you need to be proactive and have a conversation with customer service or the new doctor and say, hey, that's a mental health place next door. Um, you need to have an organic conversation and say, before we even start this physical, this is why I switch providers. Mm -hmm. Give them the information with hopes that that will help them establish a, a more a healthier rapport with you. Because trust me, the same way he said it's in your health record and mm -hmm. it follows you, that follows doctors too, okay. and, and they don't they don't want that track record. Okay. And that goes back to advocating for yourself because yeah. in those situations with a medic, a Medicaid or with the insurance that you had to get because that was what you could afford. Mm -hmm. In knowing that, advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and even if you don't have healthcare knowledge, anybody in your family with healthcare, if something doesn't sound right right to you, ask a question. Mm -hmm. right. Have that provider explain it to you in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. You know, we we know our Limitations again. Okay. So if you, I can explain something to someone in healthcare. I can explain something to Nicole right now, in all abbreviations, and she would know exactly what I'm talking about because of her background in healthcare. Mm -hmm. But you, you would have no idea what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but when you say PCP, I'm gonna think you're talking about something on the street. Ex right, exactly. Right. That's, <laughs> and that's a that's a perfect example. Yeah, yeah. I know so, where you get the PCP from. I know. What <laughs> you know when you hear that? Well, what's PCP? Well, what's this? Yeah. Ask, ask, and have them explain it to you where you can understand it. Mm -hmm. And if right. something does not sound right, ask questions okay. mm -hmm. because that that will be your saving grace asking questions because that will force them to explain it to you where you can understand okay and you know the way healthcare is built now the sad part is you go into into the office for a visit for a routine visit you have 15 20 minutes tops and then they're out the door mm -hmm. right so they're trying to get they're trying to hit it and quit it. Mm -hmm. Whatever you came in for, that's really all that they're going to address. Mm -hmm. So when you go, make sure you have what you mm -hmm. want to know. Okay. Document it and yeah, be, be as yeah. comprehensive but as brief as possible. Okay. That way it doesn't take time from what they need to do mm -hmm. and what you need for them to do. Okay. So always keep okay. that in mind. Sounds good. Sounds awesome. Good. Listen, I want to thank you. I will you send you the welcome. details of the June 2024. 2024. <laughs> and listen, I'm excited about switching this year because I won't be here in the cold with you all. Um, again, I want to thank you. I hope our viewers, not even just the men, but our women, because I always say we as women, we set the tone in these relationships. And if we could just be a little gingerly about when we're trying to support our men as it pertains Not to them. Not gingerly. Sometimes we might have to kick them in the butt. Be but impressive. but if, you haven't, impressive if you haven't tried, you should try yes. the, the gentle approach because men are more likely to shut down when you're being masculine. Absolutely. That's the word that's being thrown around about us lately. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So ladies, please share this. Um, make sure you're following Relic Media on YouTube, on Instagram. Make, and I'll post everything because... I don't think y'all gonna write it down. But <laughs> <laughs> that's why I always post it. Thank you for the information. You gave more than gems. If there's anything you could leave with our male viewers and viewers in general about men's health, what would that be? Or what is that? To take it seriously. If something is not right, say something. If you notice that something is